Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. This is our weekly message, and today's message is entitled, Look to the Future. This is the beginning of a new year with new opportunities, new challenges, renewed hopes, and renewed dreams. The Lord has given us another opportunity to achieve that which He has called us to achieve, that which He's called us to do. Sometimes we get too caught up with our life here and we linger, we look back, we stop. But God wants us to keep moving forward and keep the things of God in our sights. Let us turn to our scripture, which is found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 16. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Paul is saying, this one thing that I do, I'm forgetting everything that has happened to me, everything that is behind me, all my missed opportunities, all my failures, all my broken dreams, all my hurts and all my pain, all the bad things that have happened to me, every disappointment and every teardrop that fell. I'm forgetting all those things and I'm pressing on to the good things that God has ahead for me. I'm looking forward not backwards. I want everybody, I want everyone to turn around and take a look behind you. Look straight back. Now, I want everybody to turn back around and look straight forward. I want you to look up here. That was a physical exercise with a spiritual application. In the spirit, that was the last time you will ever look back at your past, whether longingly or regretfully. What is done is done. And no matter how you try or what you do, you cannot change the past. The past is gone. It is finished. It's over. Those of you that are watching, if you haven't done it, I want you to do it now. Just physically turn around and look behind you. Then turn back around and look straight forward. Focus your gaze upon Jesus. Please understand that things must happen in the physical before they begin to happen in the spiritual. Paul told the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. Now, I want you to think about what you saw back there. Is there anything in your past that is worth holding on to? What I mean is this. Is there anything in your past that is worth more than what God has in front of you? What he has in store for us in eternity. I understand that there are some things that hurt. They're hurts. And they're hard to just let go. Maybe a nagging pain when you see the face of that someone who has done you wrong when that face came into your mind. Or maybe you endured a painful divorce and it's hard to get over. Or maybe someone fully or willfully slandered you and now you're reaping those slanderous words that are affecting you. Maybe someone you cared about betrayed your trust. Or maybe your promotion went to someone else who is less deserving. 
You deserved it. But you didn't get it. Because the suck up got it. What I want you to know is it's not worth holding on to. You need to make like Elsa and let it go. Now, what I want you to do is to symbolically take those thoughts, those memories, those hurts out of your head and crush them. I want you to roll them up in a wad and I want you to toss them to the side. Do not look at where it lands because where it lands is where it will stay and the Holy Spirit will clean up the rest. The Holy Spirit will do his job. You are now forgetting that that which is behind you and you're now looking forward to what is ahead of you. Good things, bright things, God-centered things. I want you to make a commitment right now, right here, that your past will no longer define who you are in Christ. No longer will your past keep you from achieving. No longer will your past failures keep you from trying. No longer will the taunts of your past depress you. No longer will whispering behind your back uh, sidetrack you. No longer will someone else's careless words thrown at you knock you down. No longer will fear and doubt paralyze you. No longer will popular culture hold you back. No longer will criticism trip you up. No longer will someone else's image of you define who you are. Because no longer will you put that kind of power, the power over your joy, over your peace, power over your life in someone else's hands. No longer will you let someone else have that kind of power over you to, to determine these things for you. You are a child of God and it is God who defines who you are. You are blessed and highly favored. God is for you and he worketh all things to your good. This will be your best year yet. Believe it and live it. Remember Lot's wife in the book of, of Genesis chapter 19. No matter what you hear behind you, no matter what you see out of your peripheral vision, no matter how, you, how, how your curiosity tempts you, do not look back. Let, let me just say that again. No matter what you're seeing, out there on the sides, no longer what you're hearing behind you, no matter how tempting it seems to go and investigate, go and try it one time, no matter how, how, how that, that, that you only live once, don't, don't, don't fall for that. Do not look back because it is not worth YOLO. You only live once. Turn with me, please, to the book of Genesis and let us read that account. Genesis chapter 19, verse 23 through 26. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zor. When the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife... Behind him looked back and she became a pillar of salt. They were warned. Lot's wife was warned. Genesis chapter 19 verse 17 tells them, don't look behind. Look, read it with me. And as they, the two angels, brought them, Lot and his family out, one said, escape for your life. Do not look behind or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. Do not look behind. Do not stop. Under no circumstances were they to look behind. Under no circumstances were they to stop. They had their marching orders, so to speak. I mean, 
I understand that the Lord rained down sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore, it had to be a whole lot of noise, possible explosions, even a whole lot of shaking going on. It had to be tempting to look back to see what was happening back there. But remember, curiosity kills the cat. It's better to obey than to do anything else. It's always better to obey. Obedience is what God expects from us. As the bride of Christ, we are not to look back. We are not to stop. We are, to, we are not to dwell in our past. We are to keep moving. We are to keep moving forward. We are to keep climbing one step higher every hour of every day. It does not matter what we hear behind us. It does not matter how exciting it sounds. We are not to participate in ungodly events. Do not let the world deceive you into lingering. There's an old hymn that goes like this. Life's evening sun is sinking low. Just a few more days and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done where there will be no setting sun. The only thing that will matter in that day the day of the Lord is what you have done for Jesus and our obedience to Jesus. This world is not for us. Those who are in charge are not for us. The elites are not for us. You have to understand that Jesus is the only one that is for us. And his return is very, very near. The past is behind us. We do not dwell in the past. Therefore, there's no need for us to keep looking back. We don't have to look behind. Paul said, forgetting all that is behind me, I look forward and press forward to what God has for me. I won't allow my past or past things to hinder me. There's an old hymn. Also that says, I don't want nothing here to hinder me. For someday, his blessed face, I want to see. It makes no difference what the cost or how heavy my cross. I don't want nothing here to hinder me. You do not want nothing here to hinder you. Because nothing can hinder or separate us from Jesus unless we allow it by lingering, by looking back, or by stopping. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 through 39, For I am sure, he said, I'm fully convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Please notice that Paul did not mention the past because the past cannot separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus if we're focused our future on Jesus. I want to say this, the past is gone. It's finished. It's over. It's done with. So let the past stay in the past. Learn from the past, but keep moving forward and keep looking to the future. Jesus is coming back for us real, real soon. Yes, we may have lost a lot of precious things, a lot of precious stuff in the past. Things that we cared about, things that we can never replace or we can never get back. But nothing, and I mean nothing, can compare to what God has in store for us, us Christians. I'm sure a lot in his family lost everything they had and everything that they held dear. All the baby pictures, all the family heirlooms, all the keepsakes from family vacations. They lost everything because they did not pack they did not pack up anything because they lingered. 
They went out of that city empty-handed. Instead of packing, they were lingering. How do I know that? Well, it's kind of hard to be dragging a suitcase behind you when an angel has you by the hand and dragging you out of the city because you are lingering. You insist on lingering. So you have to be pulled out. You have to be dragged out. They were not prepared. Because as I said, instead of packing up and getting out of Dodge, Lot and his family with him was lingering. Far too often, Christians linger in the world instead of living in the world without being a part of the world. They want to identify with movie stars and the music stars. They want to identify with the rich and the famous. They know more about celebrities than they do about the Word of God. They can't even quote a verse. They don't know where, where they're found. They don't know what it says, but they know all about these, these, these uh, celebrities. They know all about their weddings. They know all about the, what they eat, where, where they went, what they're doing, what they're saying, but they don't know what God is saying. They're lingering in the world. Listen, people, listen to me. The future is upon us. The future is here. And us Christians, we need to open up our eyes and see what is going on and understand what the elites have in store for us. Like the 15-minute cities that they have planned for us, where everything you need is only 15 minutes walking or 15 minutes bike, a radius of 15 minutes. Your city will be divided up into zones and you will not be able to cross over zones from one zone to another. You will be contained in your zone. You may have a certain number of passes to cross over to another zone, but it would be very limited. Once those passes are used up, there's no more crossing. That means that if you have family in another zone, you cannot just up and go and visit that family. You can't just go and, and, and drop in on them any time that you feel like it or any time you want. In other words, your movements will be restricted. Traveling will be something of the past. All that you have will be restricted and they will have full control over the whole populations since everybody will be herded into these zone areas, into these densely populated areas. It all sounds like a sci-fi apocalyptic movie, but it is reality. Jesus is coming back real soon. There's no time for us to linger we must be about our father's business. Yes, I understand that there are problems and difficulties in your past. And I'm not telling you to pretend that they never happened. But apparently, according to the professionals, they tell us that talking about a problem or dwelling on a problem over and over causes more harm than good. Maybe that's the reason why the media and, and society are always trying to keep the past in front of us instead of us learning from the past and moving forward, moving on. We are programmed to relive and to stew in the juices of our problems instead of identifying where we want to be and who we want to be and begin to move in that direction. Move ahead, not backwards. Move ahead and leave the past behind. The first thing we have to do is to admit the problem. We need to say it out loud and then we need to accept the blame. Just like when, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God came. He said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Then he asked them another question. He said, what have you done? Adam needed to admit his wrong, admit the problem. He needed to accept blame. 
So what we do is to identify, once we do that, we identify the solution and we move towards that solution without looking back and without stopping. If you want to change who you are, you have to know who you want to be. Then you must start in that direction and you must start now. Start moving forward in the direction that you want to go. Do not believe the lies. You can change and you can get past the past. Evaluate, evaluate what you've been trying or what you've been carrying around. Evaluate and let go those things that are bringing you down, those things that are tripping you up, those things that drag you down and move forward to the prize that is before you. Your best life is ahead of you and not behind you. So don't look back. Keep looking forward. Live, living in the past or yearning for the past disrupts your future. God had something better for Lot and his family, but longing for the familiarity, um, disobedience, and fear disrupted their future. I want to say that again. Longing for things that were familiar to them, things that they know about, things that, that, that they're comfortable in. Their, their disobedience, the fear, it all disrupted what God had for them. Because God told, told Lot that he could go to this city. But because of fear, he did not stay there. He went and dwelt, him and his daughters, after his wife looked back in disobedience, he, he went and lived in a cave and his two daughters slept with him and bore children by him. And those children became the enemies of the promise. Disobedience will bear fruit that will rival the promise. There's a little phrase that plagues the whole human race and that phrase is, what if? It's so popular that Matthew West has a song called, What If? And it, 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 this, this little phrase, it goes like, like something like this. What if I can't? What if they laugh? What if I look foolish? What if I fail? What if? What if? There's always a what if whenever there's a promise. Lot was what if I stay in Zor and that city is also destroyed? You cannot get where God has for you if you're constantly looking backwards, if you're constantly questioning the direction that God is leading you to. Stop thinking about the wrong decisions you have made in your life. You can't change them. Start thinking about the right decisions that you can make in your future. The past is dead and gone. The future is bright and promising in the Lord. Here is something. If you try walking and looking backwards, you cannot walk a straight line. You will stray off the path. You will swerve off that straight line. Now, look forward and focus your gaze on a point in the distance. You will be able to walk a very straight line because you're walking towards that focused point. Now, the bottom line is this. As Christians, under no circumstances are we to look backward. No, under no circumstances are we to turn our heads and look backward longingly. Under no circumstances are we to stop regretfully. We are to keep moving forward, not backward, but forward toward the prize that is before us. 
God has greater things that we can imagine in store for us. Run towards those things. Now is not the time for stopping. Now is not the time for resting. Now is not the time for napping and snoozing. Now is the time for fighting in the spiritual. Now is the time for running toward that prize. The prize that God has for us. So in closing, let me tell you a story about how a city in Peru got its name. The city of Araguipa in southern Peru got its name through a misunderstanding. Diego de Almagro, the first white man to visit Peru in 1537, pointed to the ground to inquire the name of the locality that he was at. The natives thought he was asking permission to sit down, so they courteously replied, Araguipa, meaning, yes, you may rest here. God has a rest for us. Now is not that time, though. His return is close at hand, and with them, he will bring the rest. The rest that he promised. The devil has come down having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. The devil might whisper courteously, Ariguipa, yes, you may rest here. But the devil is a liar. Our rest is coming in eternity. Now is the time to fight the spiritual fight, to fight the spiritual warfare that's raging all around us. And we are to work in the physical because Jesus is coming back real, real soon. Are you ready for his return? Are you ready to meet Jesus? If not, you can be. All you have to do is to take your eyes out of the rearview mirror and place them on Jesus. Follow and obey and you will reach the goal. Start with the prayer of confession. That prayer we call the sinner's prayer. It's a prayer asking Almighty God to forgive you of your sins and make you right with Him. He will accept you as a child of God and you will be saved. Here's how. Say this prayer with me. Mean it in your heart and you will be saved. Heavenly Father, Forgive me of my sins. I pray, Lord God, that you'd help me not to dwell in the past. Those demons that haunt me from the past, I rebuke them now in the name of Jesus. I accept your free gift of life. Help me to live for the future. Help me to press forward toward the goal. Help me to, to run towards the prize that you have for me. Help me to live for you. And I'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do, same as usual, go and buy yourself a Bible. Read your Bible. Highlight your Bible. Memorize those verses. Use them in spiritual warfare. Use them in prayer. The Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It is your defense. Then I want you to find a Bible-believing church, not one of those progressive churches that believes that anything goes, who's a friend of the world, who, who believes that that. Anything is acceptable to God because God is love. Yes, God is love, but he's also a God of judgment. And he expects us to live according to his rules and according to his regulations, according to his commandments. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. And there you'll be with them forever, throughout all eternity. Never to be tempted anymore. Never to be plagued with your past. All things are made new. All things are glorious in the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. 
We love you. We appreciate you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.